So now it is time for Outside. Now, my guest is a very well-known figure in the entertainment industry. Having established a successful career in film and television over the past few decades, with a commanding presence and a gift for bringing complex characters to life, he's won a number of awards. His most notable role was that of Jim McDonald in Coronation Street. Oh, I love that show. And beyond his work on screen, he's known for his philanthropic efforts and commitment to giving back to his community. Through his charitable work, he's made it a priority to use his platform for good, inspiring others to do the same. If you manage to guess who it is... Yes, of course, it's Charlie Lawson. Charlie! Hello, Nana. Thank you for having me on. It's such a pleasure to have you here. I don't know where you find those photographs, yeah. but there you go. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Charlie, look, I was an addict to Coronation Street. I loved you and Bev Callard, your yes. wife. Yes, yeah. Oh, she's great. Talk to me about, because, of course, your upbringing. What was that like? You, you, when you were born, was it in Enniskillen? I was born in Enniskillen, and um, as many, many of you will or will not know, uh, the education system in Northern Ireland is very public school, religious orientated. So there are a lot of boarding schools, and there always have been, as there are down south. And indeed in Scotland, it doesn't make them like Eton. No. It's just the way they are. So at the age of six and a half, ridiculously young, I was packed off to boarding school in Belfast. And there I remained through the 70s and through the bad old times. And um, so, Troubles, yeah, yeah uh, and, and so that sort of coloured your entire life. And indeed, A.D. Dunbar would tell you the same thing. A.D. and I are friends of 42 years from, if you like, polar opposites politically. But we've never had a crossword about that, which says something interesting, I always think. But so we, we grew up through all that and... Um, and it were difficult times. I mean, we're looking at the, mm. the anniversary today of um, a lot of people who are familiar. There was many thousands of horrible incidents, but today was the day when the two corporals were dragged out of their car and yeah, murdered up um, West Belfast. So we have anniversaries every day. Yeah. Um, um, and we've moved on. Uh, and um, so... <laughs> Yeah, that was my period of growing up. So um, one was pretty politically aware from the age of sort of seven years. Everybody listened to and watched the news in Northern Ireland because it affected our lives. Mm. Uh, and it didn't just affect, you know, I grew up sort of, if you like, unionist stroke loyalist background, middle class. I found myself in my teens moving towards the working class loyalist beliefs or whatever. Um, there was a degree of snobbery with unionism, which I didn't go along with. So one was politically aware from very early on. And, and, and actually, one of the positive things to come out of that, Nana, is, is the fact that you care about politics, mm. which, which I do. That, that is... That is interesting that actually the take on it is that you get involved in what is around you and you're compassionate and possibly quite were you quite nationalistic towards Northern Ireland did you feel uh, uh, your passion towards I mean no I mean I was I grew up uh, I mean I did not meet a Roman Catholic till I was 20 years of age or 20 yeah, 20 years of age now that is nothing new if you grew up as a Protestant or a Catholic, I mean, Eamon Holmes, Eamon and I often laugh about this because Eamon and I would never have met, right. you know, there's no chance. Um, uh, just that's the way circumstances were. You grew up in an area, the area was Catholic, the area was Protestant, and there the twain met. Yeah. Now, that is, that's, a, that's a terrible thing when you think about it, but that's just the way it was. So I grew up um, red, white and blue. Um, uh, and, and many, and Adrian, A.D. bless him, he grew up the other way, although he was from a mixed marriage, a Protestant Catholic marriage, which was very rare. Um, so we were, when we look back on it now, we were so politically aware. Wow, yeah. That, 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 and that, uh, I count myself lucky for that. Well, so how did you, from there, move and get yourself involved in acting? Well, I went from the, uh, uh, leapt out of the frying pan into the fire because my mother moved us when I started to get involved with various nefarious char characters, if you like, from the loyalist side of things. We moved to Scotland, where I leapt immediately into the same thing, multiplied by ten, got myself into trouble, wised up, uh, and then had a period of short period of time where I wanted to join the forces because all my family, mother, father, uncles, and all that, had all served in the war. 
uh, and uh, a, a teacher from school um, got in touch and, and had heard that I wanted to join the British Army or the Marines and he said, you've got to go to drama school mm. because at school I was a bad boy and made to join the Dramatic Society or get out in my arse, basically, uh, and I was quite good at it. So, and then, uh, the, honest to God, I, I, he sent me the, the, the train tickets. I went to London, auditioned for four drama schools, got into two, went to Guildhall, and the rest is history. It's amazing, isn't it? Isn't it? What, what was your first role then, your first big role? Well, I did... One of the things about uh, the ni early 1980s was we were still knocking the hell out of each other back home. Mm. But people were starting to write. Television was starting to, uh, to to deal with issues from Northern Ireland. It was good drama. So Play For Today was starting to do it. That's a, a series which none of you, well, you might remember, but <laughs> <laughs> Play For Today, Player of the Month and what have you. And they started writing, uh, you know, screenplays, TV plays. And so I started very early on, 1981, 82, mm -hmm. doing that sort of stuff. I suppose the first famous one I was in was Harry's Game, mm -hmm. which was the first sort of blockbuster three hours over three nights. <coughs> and, um, <coughs> and after that, well, I joined the Royal Shakespeare Company in 83 and then just went bosh, Mike Lee in 84 movies and then... Uh, onwards and upwards was very lucky and, and of course 1987 Corey came for me and I was at the National and I was very po-faced about the whole thing really? said, oh god yes so actors... they actually approached you for, for the gig yeah but I mean I wasn't I was at the National darling so, I'm an oh, actor yes she I'm an actor, actor. I'm so fact, then they told you how much you went Ex oh, I <laughs> no no I said <laughs> no and then they finally came back in 1989 and uh, I'd just been offered a full time role in the bill as well mm. and the following week, Corey offered me a part. Barry said the money's better up in Manchester, so uh, that was it. 1989 was my first appearance in Corey, and I left in 2000, and um, I've been back, I believe, the most revisited character played by the same actor in British history. It's great, isn't it? Which is nine times. That's so good. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Not that many. But I, I was an addict to Coronation Street. I really was. Were you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to watch it religiously. And when they had used to do the omnibus, I used to watch start the entire thing. So I actually can't believe that you're sitting there. <laughs> I'm thinking, Jim MacDonald. You know, well, I, I really was. How lucky am I? You know, the writers created... Mm. I helped and uh, we created a great character and... Um, very proud of him. And of course, you worked alongside Beverly Cannard, who is incredible. The wonderful Beverly, who the most patient actress in the world, <laughs> just because she had to put up with me every morning, you know. Mm. I didn't go to bed an awful lot. Did you not? Honestly, no. I never had you down for that. Because <laughs> you, 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 your character was, was quite a dramatic, strong, yeah. quite an aggressive character in Coronation Street. Really. Well, he was an ex-soldier, yeah. and, and he didn't suffer fools gladly, and, uh, you know, a man's a man for all that. Um, I think he was very popular because, you know, there weren't many men. I mean, Corey's a woman-driven show. Yeah. Always has been. So to have a standout sort of man within that, I mean, there were a couple, but not many. So, um, you know, I'm very proud of him. And, uh, and I was saying outside to Christine, people always ask me, are you going back? And uh, I talked to Ian once a year and I said, well, the trouble is now, where would you put him? And I think I know. I think you know probably what I mean. <laughs> but given the topics that the, the long-running drama serials cover now, you know, if somebody raised the subject of whatever with Jim McDonald, I don't he think he would. He was, I don't think woke. he'd have any of it. He's not having any woke there. That I don't think he would fit in anymore. No, I, I don't. As long as he's alive, you never know. Mm. Well, I mean, it, I, I would welcome you going back. I'll start watching it again. What would you say is your, your, the, the biggest role that you feel you've done or the best thing that you think you've ever done in terms of acting, the most proud moment? Um, well, I, I definitely loved the West End when I did art. It was a three-hander um, at Wyndham's down the road. And uh, we, it was, they changed the cast every three months paid us a lot of money and looked after us. I loved doing art with Jimmy Gaddis and Gary Kemp. And then Ian Rankin approached me in 2018-19 and asked me to play Inspector Re Rebus in the world premiere of a th first uh, play that he'd written about um, John Rebus. And I was asked to play the Inspector, and I did. 
it was 108 pages and I was in 108 of them. Um, I managed to, to uh, have a TIA in <laughs> two months in, which was a bit of a shock, yeah. but took a couple of shows off and finished it. Very proud of that. But there's nothing, Nana, that I regret doing. I think all of them have been good. I've had a busy old life yeah. in the theatre and the TV, so... They're all pretty damn good. Of course, I did the famous the football hooligan won the firm. A uh, couple of yeah, a lot of things I'm proud you, of. You haven't stopped working actually, which is is very impressive, especially given the nature of being an actor. That can be a very apart, apart from the last couple of years, yeah, which has no, become but, very tricky. But, but you probably don't. Do you, you probably don't need to work anymore, do you? Really? Will you so, behave yourself? You don't need to work. Don't, don't be ridiculous, you darling. Yourself, <laughs> darling, go on. What would you say now that as you if you look at politics now? You said you're quite political. You're looking at the whole Northern Ireland protocol business. Mm. Well, what, what, what are your thoughts on on how that's being managed in particular? Uh, the way the Tory party are conducting themselves? Well, I, it, it, that's a good question, Nana, because I think increasingly underneath all this current Conservative Party or whatever, I think there's a whiff of the 70s about this. Mm. And let me say why. The vanguard movement was started in, this, in the 70s and my father was part of it because people felt that politicians in general, very much under the, under the cover of backroom whispers and whatever in Westminster, really didn't give a monkeys about Northern Ireland and would have been quite happy if, if, if we just disappeared, quite frankly. And I, I detect, unfortunately, the same thing. There are notable exceptions who are speaking up about the, the, the Windsor framework or whatever. Um, there is a section of Northern Ireland, now I don't live there, I live in Cheshire, but there's a section of Northern Ireland which is called Unionist Stroke Loyalism. Now, I don't care whether you disregard that or not, but those people happen to be there. Mm. And they believe with the hearts from the bottom of their heart that they remain loyal to the Crown and the United Kingdom, and there they shall remain. Now, a lot of people might not like that in the Alliance Party, or any other party in Northern Ireland, or in the Labour Party, in the uh, Alliance Party back home, or the Liberal Party, or indeed sections of the Conservative Party. But I'm afraid you can't forget those people. Nice. And although you might think that Jim Allister and Sammy Wilson and all these people are, are stick to their guns and brought down Stormont, may I remind you Sinn Féin brought down Stormont mm -hmm. over the Irish Language Act. So. These are people who care deeply about what they believe in and they will not be bullied. And if you pare down the Windsor framework or whatever you want to call it, it is not giving us, in inverted commas, they what they want. And, and I'm afraid they will not budge, whether you like it or not. And the danger is that more and more Conservatives will just want to wash their hands of us. And I, I, it's a deep fear I have.